Hey guys, I'm the philosopher. Today, mainly going to be about E3, which is going to be happening on June 14th. And uh, if you guys don't know, that's the uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Electronic Entertainment Expo. And one right. Of those... Okay, oh, awesome. Got, got it. it. Nailed it. Yes. Um, but it's where a lot of the big games that are coming out for next year and years to follow, uh, where they're announced. Almost think of a car show for video games. All the new tech. A lot of times there's tech demos that wind up getting scrapped or turned to something else. But overall, um, this is usually a, a fairly big event. There's other events now that go on, but E3 has been fairly popular over the years. And, and so it's something I'm excited for. I, I can't wait to, to see what they talk about. I've kind of fallen off over the last years, and so this one I get to actually watch and, and partake. Last year I think I got back into it as well. But, um, yeah, I got a whole bunch of people here. More people should be rolling in as well. And we're just going to talk about predictions, what we're looking forward to, um, what we're not looking forward to, Tyler. <laughs> and um, just overall, everything that's that we think is going to happen at E3 or what to happen. Uh, that said, first topic I got to talk about, especially since Tyler loves it so much, is the announcement of Injustice 2. This is technically E3 conversation. They did leak the trailer and all the marketing promo leak in quotation marks. And uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know, Injustice 2, um, Injustice 1 was a fighting game made by NetherRealm Studios, the people who made Mortal Kombat. And I absolutely love this game. Some people... It sucks. (laughs) Some people didn't like it. (laughs) Holy, uh, holy bad. But Everyone toss it out of your window. <laughs> or give it to your bastard child that you don't care for. Tyler, explain why you didn't like Injustice 1. The main reason I don't like Injustice is because the fact you have, um... Like... It's like the health bar does not restart itself after each round. Mm-hmm. After a round ends, um... Well, basically you get back up and... Um, your opponent, if you get knocked down, his health bar basically stays the same. But say um, your health bar gets really low again, but you manage to um, get your opponent's health bar, the first one, gone. Um, his health bar, he has a second one, but your health bar does not come back. And so after that one punch, oh, you're out. That's it. That's game. Ha, you said one punch. I love that anime. <laughs> I mean, um, good. I I think that 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 concept of how the life of the uh, persistent life bar can work well in certain types of games, like that the King of Fighters series uses that, where each person on your team of three has a persistent life bar in between rounds, mm-hmm. and once you're and once you're knocked, the, with that case, once a character is knocked out, a new character is jumping in. So I understand the. It fits with the narrative conceit of what the life bar represents, um, in terms of health or the or or, or or stamina or a point total or that sort of thing. It, it judges points total, but with with um, street with, with a, a one-on-one fight again like Street Fighter, like Mortal Kombat, having the health bar fully re, uh, and help our fully recharge in between rounds kind of makes a bit more sense with the conceit of there's a round, a theoretically a round break where people rest and limber up and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, it makes more sense for me and there's a degree of immersion breaking that I, I, I see happening with handling things that way. Yeah. And here's how I see Injustice, because uh, Aaron does make a good point. We talked about this before the show started, is uh, Killer Instinct does do this as well. But yes. with, with Injustice, um, I feel like it's like I'm watching a superhero fight or a superhero versus supervillain or whatever, where you have the round one where, you know, one person's beating up on the other guy and then, you know... They get knocked down, and there's like this transition. They get angry, they get back up, and then they beat the other person up, and and they get knocked down. And then there's like this third battle. Sometimes it doesn't always boil down to that, but it just feels a little bit more epic. It feels more tense. It feels um, 
a lot more. Um, it's like a second I mean, wind. Yeah, like it's, second. exactly. I, and it feels more immersive to me. I think you get a little bit of health back, but you know, there's like that, that, that moment where you kind of talk a little smack. You know, if you're playing Flash, he does a little bit of his personality. You get to see their personality. Mm-hmm. Um, I played Shazam for the most part, and he was he was fun. I love Shazam. Um, but you get to see their personality, and it just feels a little bit, to me, more immersive. I, I don't recommend that for all my fighting games, but for Injustice, it just seemed to really fit. Mm. I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and, and they made it kind of fair to where you couldn't, like, exceed more damage than, you know, that second life. You know, they had to actually sit down and, like, fall down and crumple or whatever. So it's not like you can take another health bar before they get a chance to get, like, a break. But if this was reality, you wouldn't stop fighting until your opponent stays down. Well, yeah, but if this was reality, you also wouldn't have your health bar be reset. So, I mean, that, that's that's our argument as well. I mean, um, so it should be one round period. <laughs> yeah, um, well, that's kind of how it feels. It's one big round. To me. Speaking of the single life bar, didn't didn't Tekken Tag Tournament have you know just like uh, the same? Well, I wouldn't say the same concept, but you know, if one of your fighters get knocks out, you lose that round entirely. Yes. Mhm. That's that's correct. With one opponent. Yeah. So uh, in I mean, Tekken as one character, I mean. <laughs> yeah, you can you can choose between doing either one character or two characters. No, okay. Choose, Two characters, um, you have slightly less health, and I think you do less damage. But also, if either one of those characters, their health bar is depleted, then that round is over. I think you normally it's best three out of five. Like you do three three uh, dots. I'm not too familiar with Tekken, but I, I believe since it's a 3D game, you do three rounds. Yeah, traditionally. Yeah, yeah that, that is correct. And the way the life bars work in Tekken Tag Tournament is you have a larger over is. The way the life bar decrease is set up is you have, is you can tag out whatever the active fighter is, and then their health will recharge some. You have a smaller bar that's decreasing based on how much damage you take, and you have a larger bar which is how much it can recharge to. Oh, so, I know what you're talking about. So well, you that's have, a bit different now. Um, yeah. And so you have the resource management there of, okay, this guy would be at real bad, but his overall how much can recharge is longer, I'm going to tag in my fresh guy, but if this guy gets clobbered too quickly, if the other guy hasn't tagged in, hasn't recharged enough, we're, I'm still potentially in a bad way. Yep. Yeah. Um, I I don't know as much about Tekken as I probably should, but um, I know Tekken Tag Tournament 2, I actually just played that last Sunday a little bit. It's a very fun game, but very uh, very hard. For some reason, it's I, I just can't like play it correctly. I know Aaron's a big Tekken fan. He'll have to school me sometime in that game. Him and uh, a couple other friends that I have. Um, but no, I did. Anybody watch the opening cutscene for Injustice? Nope, I avoided it as much as possible. Uh, yeah, I think so. I yeah. have I have not watched it yet either, just mainly because I'm. Not the biggest fan tonally of the Injustice series in particular. It's, I, I like my superheroes a little lighter in uh, in tone, like, for example, your Marvel vs. Capcoms or that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, or even before that, Marvel Superheroes War of the Gems. Um, but with Injustice, it kind of seems to represent the, the bits of the DC universe which... I'm not as much into in terms of, of oh, we're going to have the Sinestro Core War, and yeah, everyone's going to be having hearts ripped out of them or impaled or that sort of thing because that's all what Jeff Johns is into or whatever or whoever the writer and artist is in terms of Al the but, Edge. Yeah, e- exactly. And I'm okay with a certain degree of darkness in my in my comics and even in superhero comics, but you have to have, for, for your dark bits, you have to have an amount of light in there, light levity and stuff in there to keep things, to, to balance it out. And not all, uh, and DC for a while has had that problem. For um, So, there's that. I, I would recommend um, everyone in the chat and uh, you guys at some point to watch this trailer. Don't even watch it as a fighting game, just watch the trailer as a cinematic piece of, of DC. Uh, I, you gave a very good point, but also I 
I thought this was a very uh, just. Maybe it's because I'm an animator, but I, I thought this was very, very well done. Story-wise, it's very intriguing. But seeing Superman, like, the opening scene, like, beating the hell out of Flash, uh, or, or actually, no, you know what? I take that back because they're kind of going at it back and forth, and Flash gets some good licks in. But it's... I love the story of the first one, the whole idea that Superman just snaps and creates a whole new regime and, like, becomes the emperor of the world pretty much and, like, breaks the superhero uh, Justice League in half, uh, metaphorically. And mm. this, I feel like, is a continuation of that. And I, it feels like there's a lot of friction, obviously. You know, all, the, all the DC heroes are fighting. Um, also, Aaron makes a very great point that I'm kind of excited for, is Supergirl is confirmed. She's going to be in the game. And I, I'm excited to see that. I want to see how she plays. I, I hated Superman because he just felt too overpowered to me. Well, that's but... Superman for you. Yeah, I mean, He's you can't always not make him overpowered. From what it sounds like, it sounds like, exactly. you know, Marvel's Civil War, only done right. Mm. Dang, sick burn. Sick burn. Sick burn. Oh, look, oh, it's One Punch Man. Yep. Yeah, though, speaking of animation, I guess kind of, I don't know if we want to get into the E3 stuff, um, and games we're looking forward to, we've seen, um, it sounds like we're going to see much more gameplay footage of this E3 of Cuphead. Hmm. Oh, is that oh. the cartoony thingy, right? Yeah, th- yeah, yeah, that's the one where it's based off like nineteen yes. twenties and thirties and forties cartoons. Yes, I'm so looking forward to that. I totally forgot about that game. And th- that game just consistently looks absolutely gorgeous. How much time they spent on that like game? I don't know. I want there to be like a collector's <laughs> edition with a documentary just about hey, here's how we did the animation for this game. Or even if we don't get that, like something like um, the Extra Credits channel, they've been doing some side videos and stuff on animation in games. And I just love to have them sit down with the game developers and go through how they designed the animation for those characters, because that's nuts. And this is a 2D game with non-polygonal characters, so this is basically this is basically more hand-drawn animation as opposed to your um, your Street Fighter Fives, your um, or even your your um, Guilty Gear um, X3s or your the new King of Fighters, where it's a three dimensional model, even if it's in a two dimensional plane, it's a three D model that where you can thus use that and to set up your animation and stuff. Or instead, you're working in two D from whole cloth for a particular stylistic uh, conceit. Hmm. Mm. So, so basically, so think of the old style Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, if I may super add old, something, sorry. Sorry, let's say, like, just, just, you got kind of run those super old style Mickey Mouse, like Steamboat Willie, like the old Mill, like. Popeye. Like, yeah, Popeye, <laughs> um, Fleischer, Bro- Fleischer, Brothers, Fleischer Brothers animation. Kicking it super old school. Love Felix the Kicking Cat. Kicking it old school. Felix the Cat. <laughs> <laughs> It would be a crime not to release an art book with, you know, a special with the collector's edition or a special edition. Oh, yeah. That would be the shit and would easily justify the purchase, you know. A huge ass colle- uh, art book with the various different de- drawings, you know, and various different concept art. Now, does anyone know who the developer is of this game? Um, Cuphead is developed by Studio MDHR. Um, yeah, they they have a, a new gameplay trailer. Uh, Polygon posted it. Oh, hey, that in the but, chat. Here's a question. I thought this game was only digital download. That are they actually making a physical copy? Um, I think it's currently going to be. Um, it is currently going to be digital download. I would like there to be a physical copy. Yeah, it's exclusive um, to Xbox One and PC right now. Does it have to be on Xbox One? Or PC. You have or a PC. PC. What about PS4 and Wii U? Uh, no. Currently, it is just Xbox One and PC. Uh, it's probably Microsoft threw some money at them to make sure it gets... Uh, to finish the funding. Damn it, yeah. Xbox, make a physical copy. Let them do one. Yes, I really do. Even if they just do a Kickstarter for one, that would be fantastic. Just to have a, a big physical art book option for this, because that is something worth showing off. That is that is a beautiful game. Just looking from the trailers. Yeah, it does have a very Popeye 
Steamboat Willie-esque look to it. Yeah, that is I, very, I like that. Uh, that's good. I, I, I love... I don't know if there's any developer, but I love these smaller scale games that are very stylized and like pay homage to uh, different styles of art and different styles of media and really kind of rejuvenates what it means to be a video game or what it means to look like a video game or what a game can look like. So it's, it's really cool. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get it like right when it comes out, but it's really nice to see something like this. And you know, it's, welcome, Ian. Um, sorry. Um, it has a lot of charm to it, you know. Mm-hmm. Except yeah. instead of these whole, you know, ultra-realistic bullshit games. <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. Shots fired. <laughs> but, that's, but that's what makes it, you know, an experience and a joy, you know, because it has that charm. Because, you know... Um, I don't think it's... I, I know that we've seen... Uh, I'm pretty sure that there has been a game similar to it. Um, it but, from, from the trailers I've seen, it's very Gunstar Hero, Heroes-esque in terms of the game, the play design. Um, but even then... Well, Gunstar Heroes is certainly a great animation. Actually, so does um, Metal Slug, which also has a similar gameplay style. Love that it's game. Sti- it's still... Like, and Metal Slug is certainly a beautiful game to watch in action, not just to play fun to yeah. play, but it's still like, this blows Metal Slug after the, out of the water. Hmm. But not Gunstar Hero? Hmm. Um, Gun- Gunstar Heroes is actually, I- I'd say in terms of... They're all fantastic. And- yeah, they're, all, they're all fantastic <laughs> gameplay-wise, visually in terms of fluidity of animation and character of the environments and that sort of thing. I would go Gunstar Heroes, Metal Slug, and then currently... Um, Cuphead, because mm-hmm. Gunstar Heroes had the weight of the Neo Geo um, AVS hardware behind it, and that lets you do a lot in terms of animate, in terms of animation, in terms of information on the cartridges and that sort of thing. There's a reason why Neo Geo's the systems and the cartridges were so goddamn expensive. Wait, wait Gunstar Heroes on Neo Geo? No, gun, no, no, Metal Slug was Neo Geo. Gunstar oh. Heroes was Genesis. I about to say I have it on Genesis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I okay. love Metal Slug. Mm. Mm. Metal Slug is fantastic. I, it's been player. years since I played that game. Since the early 2000s. Metal Slug X was my jam. Uh, I used to play that in the arcade at a movie theater back in New Jersey a long time ago with a friend. So Very great memories on that one. It, uh, I played it all, um, all the way back maybe 2001, and I was at a youth center. <laughs> hmm. He's got a shooting Hadoukens and stuff. That's pretty cool. Ooh. Oh, uh, you're looking at the gameplay? Yeah. Oh, I, I've, been looking at it. I've never <laughs> saw any of the gameplay. But um, So one game you mentioned uh, before we started, which I'm actually... Uh, I'm not excited about the game itself, but I love, I love, love, love animation. And Watch Dogs 2. Mm-hmm has some very great parkour animation in the game that I'm excited to see. Yes, but here's the sad thing. I did not like the trailer, but I just watched... Um, well, I, not watched, but I saw clips of it, of them like making the game. Mm-hmm. How they're doing parkour and all these great things. That was way more interesting than the teaser or trailer they just showed. I like the overall narrative conceit of the Watch Dogs game of the Watch Dogs series. Um, I when I saw the original trailers for the first Watch Dogs and CTO, uh, talking, talking about CTOS, when I did my um, best and worst of, e- of V3 for that year when they did, first debuted it, I put that in among my best because it was the, the narrative conceits about it's sort of like kind of an early cyberpunk to a certain degree, a more grounded in the in the modern world kind of cyberpunk. To do, do put it in comparison with, with like William Gibson's work, less Neuromancer, more the Bridge trilogy, um, the Bridge series, and like um, Idoru and Virtual Light, and seeing that, and so I, I saw the I, I liked that when I played the first Watch Dogs, I enjoy. Um, I did run into some problems with the narrative was kind of blah. Um, to a certain degree, the um, driving. the driving was terrible, 
Yes. And and I heard I heard somewhere that they actually I don't know how this works, but they copy and paste from another racing game into this game. I don't know how true how true that is. Well, as, as far as for Watch Dogs two or Watch Dogs one. One, because um, I heard the reason why the driving was so terrible because they copy. Oh, I don't know how this this game tech work, but I heard they copy and paste from a racing game into this game. Um, I I could see that being a thing. I mean, some ways it can work better than others. Like I believe, um, basically the refinements of the driving engine that, for example, Rockstar used for the Midnight Club series were then carried over into like Grand Theft Auto to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll say that, I mean, depending on the game source game you're taking from, you determine how well it works and how crunchy that those games. Um, driving mechanics are. And hopefully with this game, they've refined the driving mechanics. It looks like they found an interesting way to, if you want to play co-op, to do some in, to work some co-op in there by having your protagonist not being just a lone man on the edge. Um, as with Watch as with uh, Watch Dogs One, where you've got or he's part of um Null Sec or Ghost Sec or whatever. And so you have your hacker buddies who you're teaming up with over the course of the, uh, the game. Yeah, as Aaron mentioned in the chat, Max Payne 3 shooting and forming Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we've got some of that from there. And you, you kind of see this <clears throat> design of other games informing other major um, Ubisoft titles with the traversal of Assassin's Creed to a certain extent, not the full same degree, informing... Um, uh, watch uh, forming Watch Dogs One. Hopefully, Watch Dogs Two. We get some of that more dynamic, um, go anywhere parkour traversal because that would be great. Yeah. And combined with some real, actually good driving controls and that sort of stuff to make it getting around the world more of an enjoyable experience. So, speaking of, um, you mentioned Cyberpunk. This is another. It's a game that's. Rumored to show up at E3. Cyberpunk and, 2077. Yep, made by CD Projekt Red. Yep, um, I, I'm I, I'm pumped about this because, as I mentioned in previous videos, I'm, my background is in tabletop role playing, and Cyberpunk 2077 is based off the Cyberpunk series of tabletop role playing games from R. Telzorian Games. Hmm. Um, where they started title out as Cyberpunk, and then Cyberpunk 2020, uh, 2022, I believe it was. Um. And then a few other revisions along the way. And I've never really played those just because I didn't really quite get as much of the world building crunch stuff. They didn't do as much with that as my other main go to in the cyberpunk tabletop role playing genre, which is Shadowrun. Um, yeah. sh um, but if this game does well, hopefully it, it, it builds a very interesting and um, evocative world. And certainly CD Projekt Red has done this before with the Witcher series. Um, if this carries over into a tabletop role-playing game, mm -hmm. I could see this this kind of revitalizing that. As yet, we don't have any word of a new edition of the tabletop role-playing game, but that can change. Um, that hopefully will change. Yeah. So yeah. let me ask you guys this. What games do you want to see announced at E3? The next bloody war game. Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh -uh. Oh, so, as far as Kingdom Hearts 3 goes, we um, they did do a teaser trailer earlier for um, 2.8, where I mentioned we'll be hearing more yep. about Kingdom Hearts 3 in this, mm -hmm. in this winter, which means TGS, right. um, which kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, what I would like to see, Bloody War 3 actually would be interesting. Um, There's already I, a Bloody War 3. He's on PS2. Bloody, 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 but a new Bloody <laughs> War game. Interesting. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I believe that Konami owns it. Yeah, Damn Konami you, owns Konami. it because because it's owned by uh, owned by Hudson, which is now owned by Konami. Which yeah. means what we're actually going to see is the bloody roar pachinko machine. Yeah. Oh fuck, fuck Konami. you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so, I've been waiting for another bloody roar game forever, but ever since Konami got the rights to um Hudson, they yeah. canceled the production of the next one. Yeah. Well, it's... But all seriousness, I'd like to see maybe some kind of update on the Shinmu, what's going on there. The, more info on Shinmu would be awesome. Um, Xbox going to announce it this time. 
Um, what else would I like to see? Ooh, there's... Um, I want to see more about um, Mass Effect Andromeda. I've been recording uh, Mass Effect 3, some Mass Effect 3 gameplay stuff. That is my next Let's Play after Lost Planet 3 finishes. Um, by which I mean I finished recording the, Let's, the tail end of the Let's Play of Lost Planet 3 and my recording game. And now recording uh, the Let's Play for Mass Effect 3. Um, but I, I am looking forward to, to Mass Effect Andromeda and seeing what they do with a whole new galaxy to explore and a whole new world to build and where things come from that. Yeah, uh, I can't wait. Uh, I loved 1 through 3. I know the ending was all controversial and everything like that, but I'm really excited for it. I think I'm it's going to be good. Um, Tyler's obviously a hater. <laughs> uh, no, I, I did give Mass Effect a try, and I, I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, that's uh, understandable. And, and I mean, I don't hate. It's not like I hate it. It's just it's not for me. Yeah. What, what were you gonna say, movie goer? I was gonna say um, another game that you know I'm looking forward to is the new uh, Legend of Zelda. Which one? The uh, the one on the yeah. Wii U on the NX. Yeah. Uh, it, it, either one. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like it's going to be a, a, a sky, a, a Twilight Princess situation where it's going to be released on both. Uh, yep. Same game on both. Um, we'll see how this goes. They're going to have the Wii U version on the Treehouse stream, it sounds like. And then showing some bits of other games later hmm. on the stream. Not on the show floor. The show floor is just going to be uh, hands-on for... Legend of Zelda, like that matters because we're not, go <laughs> we're not going. Um, um, here's the thing. You think Nintendo would do the usual silly thing this year? Because I do know... Um, the I don't... Because I know the... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, I know the previous CEO guy loved doing those um, silly um, skits like Star Fox or Robot yeah. Chicken. I think that was very much an Awada thing with his... Awada was definitely someone who I feel like was much more engaged. Like, there are CEOs that will come out and they're like, they, they're, they're like, they'll talk the talk of, oh, I'm engaged with the games and engaged with gamers and that sort of thing. Um, but probably they not... They're not really that into it to a certain degree outside of gaming. There are, um, but there are others who, who walk the walk and talk the talk. Yves Goumont, whose name I just mangled of Ubisoft, is definitely someone like this. Um, and certainly Awada yeah. was someone who really... who loved games as a form of artistic expression, as a form of fun. Uh, family fun. A family fun. Enjoyed games in basically every aspect of it. Yeah. And... That, and that carried over a lot into the Awada Asks, in the, um, uh, the the Nintendo Directs, and in their E3 press stuff. Yeah. And I don't know what we're going to get from this new guy. Yeah, I was going to say, that makes a, a really good point, because we're going to, it's possible that we might see a new uh, kind of presentation from Nintendo this year, because uh, I, I can't remember the guy's new name, but uh, Iwata's obviously not... not there anymore, um, so we might see a whole new thing. We're, um, from what I understand, he's very businesslike, so it, yeah. it could. I don't know. It, it could be a, a big change for Nintendo. I, the way he, the way I, uh, he looks, he looks more like a businessman. Uh, it all comes mm -hmm. down to the memes. How well will the presentation translate to memes? Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, Horizon. Um, uh, is it Horizon Dawn or something like Horizon that? Horizon Zero Dawn, the most Zero generic Dawn. name in the history of generic game names. Uh, what is this game? I don't think I've heard of this one. It's kind of like a open world, prehistoric, cybernetic dinosaur oh. game. It they they, sh they showed it off at last <laughs> year's Sony press conference. It actually looked pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the main character. It's has, it appears to have like Stone Age technology kind of thing, sort of like with um, Far Cry Primal. Um, but we're going through this, it's a third person, and going through this environment and hunting robot creatures. Like, Dinobots. Not just Dinobots. Like, the character starts out stalking a robot elk, hunts it down, kills it, and then when it's... Sca and then when, when the, the, the protagonist, when she's scavenging from the carcass... Then a then the giant robot dinosaur shows up. 
or the robot mm-hmm. dinosaur, the norm, the one-to-one scale robot dinosaur shows up and attacks, and we cut away before that before that fight happens. Mm-hmm. And that game has been delayed. Um, we didn't have a release date for this year. We just heard that it was coming out this year. It's been pushed back to like spring 2017. Mm-hmm. But actually, that probably means we'll probably see some gameplay footage here to hype things up and show how far along the game is going because it was certainly getting a lot of good buzz last year. Yeah, from what I understand, that's going to be the PS4 exclusive. I believe. Mm, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's Sony uh, published. Uh, yep. The cur- current current um, president of Nintendo, by the way, is Tatsumi Kimishima. Gesundheit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, um, that game and oh, you know what? Um, shit, Scalebound, Scalebound, um, the the Xbox One exclusive game. That's that's something I'm. Oh, with the dragons. Yeah, with the, the dragon taming or whatever. That game looks really cool. I don't think I know this one either, so... Fired. So it's like, <laughs> la- so it's like Lair, only better. It, it's like Lair, better, and with a bit of how you train your dragon where you're... where yeah. it's you, you, you are taming a dragon and Ooh. leveling it up and training it and that sort of thing, it sounds like. And it fights for you, yeah. It's not so much riding it, more so it fights with you. It's kind of like a Pokemon, a giant... Uh-huh. Pokemon. I was looking forward to the writing part. No, you really and there's did. also online... Co- I, I, I don't know if there is any writing. They might not have shown that yet because they're still working on it. But there's also going to be, I think, four-player online co-op. So that has me excited. I don't have an Xbox One, but um, I if, in, in the future, eventually, maybe, or if it goes to PC, hopefully, that would be really okay. cool. So is this game more like um, Elder Scrolls series or the first it's person? It's not clear. The... the um, one of the protagonists we see in the trailer is doing is more modern referentially. Yeah. Like I, so oh, futuristic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With his headphones. But um think uh, Monster Hunter meets Devil May Cry meets a little bit of like uh what has like magic in it? Not Dragon Age. Um But yeah, something along those lines. It's an action RPG. Dragon's Dogma? Elder Scrolls? Yeah, yeah. Dragon's Dogma. I would say Dragon's Dogma a little bit more. Um, so it's like a, ha- a fast-paced action hack and slash RPG style of game, ah. where you can also command a dragon and tell it to beat shit up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shut yep, yep. up and take my money. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It looks really, really good. Um, so I'm excited to see what they show from that. Kingdom Hearts is, of course, going to be awesome. I hope. Now, I don't know what else they could show, but I recently played Platinum, the demo for Final Fantasy XV, and I've got to say that was very amazing. I'm a little behind on Final Fantasy XV, and I'm just now reading about it and looking into it, and I I don't want them to show too much, but I'm really looking forward to that game. I hope they do show something at 15 or at E3. Um, if you guys haven't seen too much on it, it looks really good. I think this game might actually revitalize the Final Fantasy series. Uh, 13 was... Was okay, D- big but, disappointment. But it was. I fucking it, hate that. I wasted my freaking vacation on that game. I do want to say something about fifteen. I see a um, glimpse of the game. Um, and yes, I did pre-order this game. I'm getting the I, special edition. But um, my only worry, my only worries is I'm hoping they bring back um the Overworld map. That I can go back to a town like anytime I want, like later in the game. Unlike it's, 13, where it's just like a linear path, I only can go one direction. It sounds like the, it sounds like that they are doing like you do the backtrack and revisit stuff. Um, they, I, I saw the um, release date announce event, the the big like hour long thing where they announced 15 things about Final Fantasy 15, like <laughs> the um. Like where they're doing like mentioning the King's Glaive film with Sean Bean playing the dad of the main character, so you know he's going to die. <laughs> um, Smile, hard stream removed. <laughs> um, and all sorts of other stuff, and it looks really good. The summons that I've seen look very spectacular. Mm-hmm. I like the way that the um, spells interact with the environment. You actually can get a bit of this if you played the um, platinum. I, the, 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 the first demo or the episode Duce, uh, or whatever it is they called it, because um, I, I noticed when I played that, um, 
before they formally made a big deal about it in the showcase and video, was like I cast a Fira spell in the grass, and then my, my characters walked through it and took damage. Like, huh, that's weird. All right, I cast Fira there. Hey, that's cool. Um, or so we'll see. Well, fire there. We'll see how that plays out. Um, yeah. I'm interested. Nintendo has kind of teased on their press conference that they're going to be talking. Um, their, their their stream. They're going to talk about the um, new 3DS version of Dragon Quest VII. I'm interested to see if they're going to have any. Thing of the new Shin Megami Tensei game, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, which I've been meaning to pre-order. Um, it's sort of a alternate take on the plot of Shin Megami Tensei 4 for the 3DS. It's sort of like if you're familiar with how the Persona games are structured, where Persona 2 has um, Innocent Sin and I forget what the second half is called. Mm. Um, it's something like that. It sounds like I played a little bit of the second, uh, the Innocent Sin on the PSP. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, the the second one, which got a uh, PlayStation release, or the, the second half of that that got a PlayStation release, it sounds like they're doing something like that with um, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. Um, I'm also hoping... We've seen a bunch of the um, uh, stuff on Persona 5 for, um, from the trailers and stuff. Um, YouTuber Yong Ye did a really good breakdown video of the trailer. I'll try to find a post... In, um, the link and put it in the in the uh, chat in the chat. Um, but it's you, you really break down the into game mechanics and that sort of thing. I'm hoping we'll get a more um, closer look at the game in the uh, at E3. I mean, it's Persona has gotten big enough that it actually might even be something that they might show at a press conference. Which it'd be nice seeing a JRPG that's not from Square Enix at a press briefing again. Mm-hmm. Um. Persona, um, the first time I played Persona was Persona 4, and that game was amazing. <laughs> uh, that's the, one of those, I think, few RPGs where... Um, actually, this is probably the only one where you don't, go, you don't really go exploring. You're actually in this small little town, and the only exploring you do is in the TV set. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's, mo- it's more like a school life, too. I I must um uh, uh I must uh, oh dang that was the best way to put this um uh I must get along with this character more so oh kind I, of like a social yeah social okay, here we go. life I'm sorry okay. got the uh, got the link to the to Young Yi's trailer Young Yi's trainer trailer analysis it's it's long it's like an hour long so you might, might want to block some time out. Um, wait until after we're done with the podcast <laughs> before you go watch it. But yeah. it's a really good breakdown of the trailer and possible gameplay and narrative mechanics and stuff that goes on in the game. Hmm. So, I'll check that out. Um, Aaron does make some good points. Two games. One, No Man's Sky. I I'm more and more curious about that game. It just seems like there's so much going on in that game that um, I don't even know where to start with that game. I I, I want to play it. It looks amazing. I think it's going to be a very good game, hopefully. Uh, I know there's supposedly multiplayer, and that, that's a whole thing. The other game is Star Citizen, and I the only reason I'm not excited for that game is because the price tag is so high for that game. Like, $200 really? for a ship. Yeah, I mean, unless they've changed, they might have changed their updates, but what you're doing is the game is actually free from, from what I remember, but you pay for the ships, and the ships actually are, like, really, really expensive. And, Holy uh, mackerel! That's it, that's the main reason I'm not excited for the game. Yeah, but the game looks immaculate. It looks it, great. It, it sounds like there's like three different chunks to Star Citizen. There's like the big MMO open world thing, which is where the the, the free bit and you have to pay real money for ship stuff. It mm-hmm. sounds like they're trying to do a single player thing that's meant to be more wing commandery, where they're getting actors and stuff to shoot cutscenes. I don't know if it's going to be actual FMV. I know they're probably not going to get Mark Hamill back because he's kind of got this other thing he's working on right now. Um, some movie with Disney and Lucas, I don't know, star something. Um, it's going to fail. <laughs> yeah. You're going to um, fail. <laughs> but um, they try, try to do that sort of thing again because, I mean, it's it's a game from the creator of, of Wing Commander, so he's going to try and do that stuff. Yeah. Um, not sure... Um, there's a third other bit that's as part of that. I'm not sure how precisely how that's supposed to work out. 
I really wish we had some better messaging of when this game, of once the game's released, what the pricing structure is actually going to be and what it means. So and, I got and, for, for that. And for like, like for two hundred dollars for a ship, is that like two hundred dollars? And if your ship blows up, you just get a new one of it, or if it's two hundred dollars, or if it's um, two hundred dollars just to get this ship, period. And if the ship blows up, then you're out two hundred dollars. That, uh, for example. So here's um, here's an update to that. Uh, I just went to the website. You can purchase one of two ships, and they're forty five dollars. And and this is what it says. Right now it's an alpha. The game is an alpha, so it's playable. But it says, uh, please note starter packages include a ship and everything you need to play Star Citizen today, as well as the full game upon release. No additional purchase required. So the minimum is forty five dollars to get into the game. Um, in order to get more ships, it's probably going to be more and more. Um, and these look like very, very basic ships compared to what I saw in the gameplay footage. So um, you can also get some other things like um, a squadron. I think that's an additional fifteen dollars. So that's so pretty much sixty bucks to get into the game and get everything you need to be a okay. Um, I, I don't know if there's any way to get in currency or in-game currency to buy ships. I, I kind of doubt that, but well, that'd be cool. I, I, I would hope that was, because part of the thing, it sounds like they're trying to do is something like um, Wing Commander, um, like Privateer, and F Free Space is more Descent related, but the sort of thing where it's essentially an elite alike, like the, the original old school elite alike, where you're traveling around, you're trading, you're that, that's the thing, you're doing stuff to get in-game currency to get cooler and cooler ships. Um, and if it's just, if you buy the game and the one ship you get is what you're stuck with for the whole game, and it's just deathmatchy. That's not really very fun. Um, if it's, and so, it certainly has no appeal for me. If I'm playing a space sim, I want to go out and run missions. I want to go hunt pirates. I want to go um, haul cargo. I want to get either want to get either I want to get my Millennium Falcon on, or I want to get my Harlock mm -hmm. on, or I want to get um, my Wedge Antilles on. And if it's just you're buying a deathmatch. You're basically just buying a deathmatch game. That's all it really is, and there's no way to upgrade your ships and get in-game currency by doing the things that people come to this genre to do. Then, why did this game make so much money in the Kickstarter? Yeah, that's the whole debacle with this game, which is it's. I, I've stayed away from it for that reason. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the website. You, look, you can look at all the ships. I, I highly recommend it. The game is very beautiful, but at the same time, like I, some of these ships, some of them are like 15 bucks, some of them are like 100 plus. I'm and, hoping that I don't know. I'm sensing a play to win type of vibe from this. Very heavily, so. Yeah, it's. I, I'm really gonna have to see like once this game. There, there are some games where like when it's announced. I am absolutely inclined to pre-order, like Persona, like Shin Megami Tensei, like Final Fantasy. And there are some games where I cannot emphasize more to wait until the game is out, until there are reviews and discussion, and this is why critics like us exist, is to, when the game comes out, to talk about, to, to analyze the game and discuss it, and talk about what works and what doesn't, so that people make a very informed decision, and this is one of those times. Yeah, and this is one of those games. So... One oh my god damn okay what happened? So, I, I'm looking at the website here, and I, I was shocked because I looked at a price tag for twenty seven hundred dollars for one of the, the packages. Then I scrolled down farther, and they have a five thousand dollar package, they have a ten thousand dollar package, and they have a fifteen thousand dollar package. Jesus. Yeah. Why? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this yeah. just sounds like a scam. Some kid is going to use the parents' credit card and buy the fifteen thousand dollar one. And then we'll hear it uh, from Alpha Omega oh. Sin because of it. And if you <laughs> tech USA. Yeah. Um. To to briefly answer your question, Aaron, we actually did a podcast talking about um the PlayStation Neo. I'm I'm actually for it. I think it's a kind of interesting idea. I think it's going to change the future. I don't want to get too deep into that topic right now, yeah. but I, I think it could be good, um, depending on how it's done. But um, I, I think the better question might be what, as far as for how it relates to E3, what do we expect to hear about uh, the PlayStation Neo mm -hmm. and, the ex and the revision of the Xbox One? I think we're definitely going to see the Slim. We are absolutely going to see the Xbox Slim. I think so. Um, 
and we're probably at price points for that, and we may get even get a price drop for the standard model where it's like actually the, the standard model's already gotten a price drop. We're, we're probably gonna get a uh, announced date for the for the slim uh, price point for the slim, which I suspect is going to be what the Xbox One was pre price drop, and then. If anyone's going to talk about the next revision, it may be <laughs> Sony, and it's probably going to be in combination with their VR stuff. Um, Nintendo's probably, or their, um, Microsoft is probably going to be asked, particularly since their revision is so dramatic. And I know that with um, PlayStation and the Neo, they have a route where the new games will still work, um, post release of the Neo will still work on the older system. But you have incentive, performance incentives for getting the Neo. I and there's probably going to be a whole bunch of questions asked at Microsoft about what they're about if they have something comparable. Um, and the response is probably going to be something to the effect of "Wait until Gamescom and publicly." And the private response behind closed doors when the press isn't is hope is listen when they think the press isn't listening, it's going to be, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Now what? we got to have an answer. we got to have an answer. We need to figure this out fast. Five dollars! For those of you who don't know what PlayStation Neo is, it's essentially an upgrade, a hardware upgrade for the PlayStation 4. So rather than creating a new console altogether, they actually are upgrading the specs of the PlayStation 4, which kind of... Uh, we, we talked about this as well, but expanding expanding the life of it or, or just making it better um, capable to play more powerful games in the future because it was a little bit behind from what I understand, and so now it's kind of catching up technologically-wise. I just have one small issue with it. Is, are they going to have a device where I can just transfer all my um, save games to the new PS4 Neo? I believe that the, the way that they handle migration between two systems, and this is what you do if you had to replace your... Uh, PS4 or console anyway is, mm -hmm. uh, or replace your hard drive because the nice thing about the PS4 is you can just swap it out with any user user off the shelf hard drive as opposed to like the Xbox consoles. Um, is you back up your, is you they basically take a hard drive image and stick it on an external hard drive. They actually have a backup utility in there. They do this with the PS3 too um, as well, um, and then you just slap the um, new for. For hard drive upgrade, you just slap the new hard drive in. For upgrading to a new console, you just probably hook up the uh, your external hard drive and just tell it, okay, restore from a backup on external media. Hmm. And to carry all the, the um, saves over that way. It probably wouldn't hurt as well if... Um, but, well, not hurt as well, but this certainly also shows the advantage of having cloud saves, particularly since I believe... The cloud save limits on the PS4 are, are on, for PlayStation Network is much higher than for uh, Xbox. Mm. So, I mean, it's still a case of porting your DLC over if you have your big Rock Band library, because um, you can't save your Rock Band library to the cloud, nor would you really want to. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, but if you have your save games for um, dra for Dragon Age or for Final Fantasy or what have you, probably easier to carry that information over. Um, but yeah, but with the Neo, it is it is compatible with all your previous PS4 library. Yep. Um, and from what I understand, the plan is is for games coming out after September. I think this is what I remember from the, listening to the Giant Bombcast. Um, they need to have a future, a day one patch, which would give them a Neo mode, which is basically effectively like bumping up the sliders on the PC version, or that sort like of high mode and low mode. Yeah, high mode, high mode and low mode. Um, this game, this, this is probably going to be a situation where if if companies are developing their games for PCs anyway, this is going to be a much easier porting process because they're already dealing with designing scalability and stuff. Um, as far as PS3 backwards compatibility, I believe that Xbox is... Not Xbox, but I mean, PlayStation still plan is for PS3 stuff is, this is why you get PlayStation now. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's, VR that's does have something to do with it. That, though, isn't there? Hmm? PlayStation uh, Now? Oh, yeah. What, I'm sorry, what? Ain't there, like, a monthly fee for the PlayStation Now? Um, they have either month... 
they have options for monthly, tri-monthly, or annually. Mm-hmm. I well, believe for PlayStation Now. However, it's also a situation where depending on where you are and how your internet is, PlayStation Now can be kind of crappy and also depends on the game. Like, I tried playing uh, Killzone 3 uh, using PlayStation Now. I beat it, but it I had some significant artifacting issues. Mm. Um, so you're saying I should stick with my physical copies? Okay. Uh, <laughs> physical copies will physical copies will have better performance if you have a physical copy. Um, on the other hand, like I played. Um, also, PlayStation Now doesn't get you DLC, which is a problem because I tried playing uh, Ash- Ashra's Wrath. I beat the single player, Ooh. but I wasn't able to play the DLC portions of the game. Ooh. Uh, the last point I wanted to make, though, or the last topic I wanted to talk about was Bethesda. They oh, yeah. have a um, a an event that they're hosting, and they rented an arena for this. Oh, yeah, they, yeah they're, they're basically doing a press briefing, it sounds like. Right, and it makes me wonder, what could they be announcing? Is it well, going they, to be Fallout? They, they, didn't they do the, they, they did one last year, mm-hmm. um, but I, I suspect it's probably going to be a more standard press briefing. Um, like what, what, like what you're getting from, like, the big three plus Ubisoft. I mean, there's a there's an open spot because I believe like one of the companies dropped out, I think, and so it certainly makes sense for Bethesda to come in. I suspect we're going to get um, we're going to get Fallout DLC plans there. We are going to get um, any DLC announcements for Doom. Um, we've got. The Dishonored 2, mm-hmm. which we're probably going to see more gameplay of, um, and if it if it has a co-op mode or something, because you have um, what's your face, the princess, who's a playable character now, in addition to Corso. Um, so, if there's a co-op related to the princess and Corso, we'll probably see that there. There's rumors that no, really, we mean it this time. Prey 2 will actually show up. Right, I heard that. Um, we'll see if that actually happens. Um, I mean, how long I mean, it's been? Like ten years since Prey. Yeah, <laughs> I feel old. Um, so that is so. This is assuming we get anything. Um, I I'm not convinced we'll get Prey too. I would um, like to see a new Elder Scrolls. Um, they might do the MMO. I kind of hope they don't. Um, speaking of well, Elder Scrolls, it, uh, there's been rumored that it might. Uh, do uh, like a HD um, what was it? An HD yes. remaster of Skyrim? Yeah, I've heard that rumor too. That their plan is to that hmm. they'll probably have for because with Fallout Four, they rolled out a um, mod support for Fallout Four on Xbox One, and they'll be having that soon for PlayStation Four. Okay. And considering the Im- improved graphical capabilities of the co- modern consoles, I could see them doing okay. We don't need to do an HD remastered release for. Skyrim on PC because they can you can just crank everything up to full blast and have it look absolutely gorgeous and see every pine needle. Um, but the console versions didn't have that, and I could see and so doing a console only HD remaster of Skyrim with mod support, with all these years and years of fantastic mods of uh, interface tweaks and difficulty tweaks and survival modes and that sort of thing, I could see that being done. I don't now. As for some of the cosmetic mods, I don't think we'll get the Macho Man uh, Dragons mod, which is a shame. But I can see them saying, "No, no, we'll get in so much legal trouble with the WWE. You have no idea." But oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's probably. I can't blame them on that one. It'd be awesome. It'll be absolutely be awesome as well. That was on a uh, Skyrim though, but yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Carmen. Yeah, uh, and th- this would be the HD Skyrim remaster. So yeah. that that would be that'd be perfect. Um, like, if, if you see how far they'd be willing to go with this, because there's also like the Morrowind remaster um, project that the fans mod have done. It's a total conversion oh. of um, Skyrim to have Morrowind in there. Um, and if that actually finished, that would be the kind of thing where. That would be amazing if they put that in as one of the downloadable mods. However, also normally with the mod stuff, they have size restrictions, and I can't imagine something like the Morrowind total total conversion being yeah. within those those size restrictions. Probably not. Mm. No, 
But that about wraps it up for today's episode. Uh, I felt like we could have gone a little bit more on a few different things. There's so much going on in E3. But, um, yeah, anyone watching this on YouTube, let us know what you guys are excited for, what you're looking forward to, uh, what you're looking forward to, uh, what you're not looking forward to, and um, any predictions that you think they might announce during E3. But uh, I'll go down the line here, and these guys will let you know what they do and where you can find them. And first being uh, Alex. Okay, so I am Alex. My stuff can be found at youtube.com slash user slash count zero OR. There will be a link in the ch- on the show notes, doobly-doo chat thingy. Um, over there, over there, depending on where you're watching this. Latest video, I have a cookbook review. Um, I, I've done one of those before. Um, <laughs> this is, so it's it's an interesting cookbook review. Um Taking a look at two celebrity chef cookbooks, and after that, next week I have my returning back to anime with a review of *Record of Lotus War* from 1990. Oh, all right. Next is uh, *Moviegoer*. <clears throat> well, uh, my name is uh, <clears throat> I'm the Moviegoer, and uh, basically, um, I'm going to be doing some video game reviews and uh, streams once I get my computer uh, fixed up. And um, once I get my capture card, I'm going to be doing, you know, various uh, different reviews from the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, to uh, GameCube and PlayStation. So nothing, well, I wouldn't say nothing is off limits, but there's a great deal that I can do compared um, than a few months ago. And I just make uh, silly videos from time to time. I can be found at uh, youtube.com, the moviegoer14. And before we go off to somebody else, I just want to say, Bone Saw is ready! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's great. Bone Saw. Um, And last but not least, Tyler. Um, yes, you can find me on YouTube, the Video Game Hunter 32, or Hot Anime 32. They'll both take you to the same channel. And currently, I'm trying my best to get my next video out. I've been having some complications at the moment, but hopefully it gets out by next week, or the week you see this podcast, hopefully. Uh, other than that, um, you also can follow me on Twitter, VGH32. And once I get my video done, I'll be drawing f- for my DeviantArt page, um, Video Game Hunter. Boom. There you go. And as always, I'm The Philosopher. You can find me on Facebook.com slash The Philosopher. Face- uh, YouTube and Twitter at Philosopher. And, of course, always on the console explosion. If you guys like this video, let us know by pressing that like button sharing with your friends, and also leave a comment down below. And if you want to see more updates from all these guys or just want to follow the podcast, press that subscribe button. You will get updates. Um, But as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.